Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are back with Will Johnson live from CPAC. Will has been there for the entire CPAC uh, event and was there for the epic return of President Trump. Will Johnson, welcome back to ATP. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So you were in the room for the world shaking return of President Trump. I heard the words on TV. You heard the words live. How did the crowd react when he came out and said, do you miss me yet? <laughs> well, you know what? The crowd exploded. Of course, USA, USA. Of course, we all miss President Trump. I even go as far, as far as saying that even some on the left miss President Trump because now they don't have their jobs any longer. <laughs> so besides the, the chance that went on for like, I don't know how many minutes, um, what was the perception if you had to give an overall review amongst the crowd what energy was created, the, the themes he presented, the messages, especially his critique of Biden. What's your take? You know what? This entire time of this event, people were like talking to each other and they're happy to talk to people with like that are like-minded. But I'm gonna tell you this much. People were looking at the Republican Party as like the Republican Party is pretty much done. At least the old Republican Party, the GOP. But President Trump, what he has done, he's brought energy, needed energy back to the Republican Party. And I can only tell you that those on the left are terrified that after they did everything that they could to destroy this man and this nation, that he is coming back stronger than ever. The energy, you can tell President Trump is now, he's ticked off. He is now ticked off. And he's, I think the gloves are coming off. So I think the, the energy that the Republican Party has now behind this president, President Trump, is amazing. Well, let me, let me ask you specifically, uh, before Trump took the stage, uh, the polling was announced and it was some incredible number, 95, 96, 97%, whatever it was, astronomical number of attendees at CPAC want Trump to be the presidential candidate of the GOP in 2024, right? Yes, of course, of course. Now, this is, now this is a candidate. In, in American history, this does not happen. If you lose, you're old news, right? Yep, yep. So Mitt Romney lost, nobody wants to hear from him. Bob Dole <laughs> lost, nobody wants to hear from him. Richard Nixon lost, he actually came back, what, 12 years later. For the most part, you lose your history. Mm -hmm. He lost, and we can argue about that some other time. At least he's not president. We know that. And the place went nuts. And this is the conservative wing. This is the base, yes. right, of the yes. GOP. And on TV, it looked like the Rolling Stones were on stage. No, absolutely. You know, so many people came to CPAC because of President Trump. When I was looking at the tickets, when I was coming here, there was tickets available. But as soon as people found out President Trump was showing up, they sold out the very same day. It was over with. And you're right. I would say it's 95%, and it's probably close to 99%. It's extremely high that this party does belong to President Trump. No matter what Mitt Romney has done or Mitch McConnell or Lindsey Graham or some of these other rhinos, no matter what they have done, the party is still with President Trump. So for a, from a political standpoint, that's an interesting comment you just made. I was quite interested from a political science point of view where Trump named every member of the House and every member of the Senate that if you're a loyal Trumpster, basically they stabbed him in the back and he mm -hmm. called out Mitt Romney and Murkowski and the others that voted 
to impeach, both in the House and the Senate, right? Susan Collins and so on. How do people here, when I say here, there in Florida, where you are at CPAC, how do they react to him calling them out and saying, you know what? We know what you did. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? They all booed their names, but they were excited about President Trump hitting them where they need to be hit. Not physically with violence, but with his First Amendment, but he straight up told them that these are the people that you need to get rid of. And all President Trump has to do is say, remove these people from office in these different states, different districts, and they're going to do it. There's so many campaigns right now against these rhinos, they're not gonna know what's hitting them. Even Mitch McConnell, and you and I have discussed it, Mitch McConnell coming out, trying to act like he's all for President Trump now, you know, because he sees no matter the stuff that they've done, that they cannot take the party away from President Trump. Well, let's talk about the future. I mean, Trump all but said he's running, but he didn't say it. He's a showman <laughs> and he knows how to set up the energy for the second or third or fourth speech, right? Mm -hmm. But he did mention that the first lady will be the first lady again, which unless Melania is gonna marry somebody else in the next couple of years, that means she's coming with Donald Trump, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, there's another scenario too that's been kind of like floating around. Now, I don't know, it's, it's all speculation right now, but one is that President Trump will run for the House for the midterm and then go in and then of course, they're gonna make him the House leader and he's going to be there for those two years. Just And they're going to be, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. They're going to be like feeling this tormented because he's there. And if President Trump were to do that, I'm pretty sure no matter where he runs, he's going to win. And the people of this country, they are seeing what the left is doing. They're seeing what the Democrats are doing. And they're going to, I truly believe that they're going to lose overwhelmingly, permitting that they can get fair and open elections. Well, you know, one of the things he talked about, which I found, and I'm sad to say this, logical, but completely out of the mainstream in regards to the Democrat Party, is he's talking about, you need an ID for everything, except one thing, the most important thing, right? Yep. The most important thing that you can do as a citizen of this country, Will Johnson, is vote. And under the new proposals, you could just show up and go, hi, I'm Will Johnson. Yeah. And you're the fourth Will Johnson that just showed up. You don't need ID, right? He's talking about this new law where you just register and walk in and vote. You need an ID for everything. <laughs> Welfare, social security, driver's license, getting on a plane, opening a bank account, right? The liquor store. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> To buy a six pack, you need a freaking ID. <laughs> you know, and he had an interesting proposal that I'd never thought about. And I like it. I've only thought about it since the speech, but I want to get your take. He said we should have one day to vote. Like it used to be when we were kids, right? And doesn't that make logic? Unless you're, God forbid, you're invalid, you're ill you're overseas, you're a soldier in uniform. Other than that, get in your car, drive, get on the bus, and wait in line 20 minutes and vote. But, but that's the, but you know, that's the point. If they're going, if you are overseas and are, you know, in some other country and you're an American citizen and you want to vote, you get an absentee ballot, but you all, we all know that you have to have that in the mailbox at a certain amount of time. You can't do it a week later, expecting to get there and then they count it. And see, that's what the Democrats are wanting. They're even pushing legislation right now to have it to where they can count votes 10 days after the election. And based well, when they- did, They just did that. I that's know, exactly but they want to happen. Exactly, they want to make it permanent. So then that way they can see on election day, if they are losing, Oh, just bring in the extra ballots. Then or we can make like sure. What happened in 
Detroit and Pennsylvania yes. and Arizona and yes. Atlanta, like yes. everywhere. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> every so everywhere they need it. Right. So if you had to pick one issue, because he did an interesting review of the first month of the Biden administration, he talked about Middle East policy where he'd made friends and peace, the likes of which the world has never seen. He made trade deals with Canada and Mexico to get rid of NAFTA, which really was bad news for the United States. He put China in its place. He rolled out the COVID vaccine with Operation Warp Speed. If you had to look at his review of Joe Biden's first 30 days, oh right? Goodness. What was the strongest couple of arguments you think are going to land on voters that Trump talked about? I think the biggest thing is that Biden has taken us, or is trying to take us to war. Biden has killed jobs. The XL pipeline killed thousands of jobs. On top of that, he's helping the Taliban with their pipeline to help them get jobs. So President Trump has that to to you know to throw back on them as well as them teaching our children that the age of three are indoctrinating them that you don't have to be the way god created you you can be a girl if you're a boy and i love the fact that president trump even brought up that women have no representation any longer and he said we need the champion for women because women need to have rights which the left is taking away i mean it's just ridiculous you just gave me five and they're yeah, all well, good. Still, okay. so, let me ask you this because you didn't mention it and 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 i watched three networks after the after the speech and they all mentioned the same thing when trump ran in 2016 will he talked about the southern border wall and the fact that our borders under obama were wide open you could walk across the border it's a felony you break into the united states right? You're a criminal. We, we hold you here. You apply for asylum and we go, okay, um, Mario, come back in three years and we're going to check <laughs> you for your amnesty request, right? Yeah. And yeah, in those Mario, three years, Mario yeah, never that, comes that, back. I was going to say, in the, yeah, in that three year period, they're going to run over probably 15 different <laughs> Americans the, and and the judges be like, oh wait a minute, we're waiting for his court date. Is that this still going? Let me ask you a question. I I heard three or four talking heads say that that's going to be, if Trump makes it the issue again, the biggest issue that's going to resonate with most middle Americans. Do you agree? Uh, I think it. I think many people will see that, and many people will agree to that, and mainly when we start seeing the crime increase, especially on the Southern, on the southern border. I have a colleague, Ben Burkwam, did an awesome report while he was down there. He actually went into inside of some of these caves, exposing what the left does not want people to see. Well, what's your prediction? Yes or no? Will Johnson, on the last day of CPAC, does Donald Trump run for president for 2024? I, I mean, you know what? Personally, I think he let the cat out the bag because he said that we're going to get another Republican to return to the White House. There were so many signals. Now, he didn't come out and necessarily say it, but he did emphasize that we have to fix this election because if we don't fix the, the, the election, then it doesn't matter if he runs or not because we're going to lose because they're going to do the same thing they did this past election. So that has to be resolved. And I love the fact that he's addressing that issue and we have to, because it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter after that point, but I really, based on what he said, he let the cat out the bag. Of course, of course, as of right now, but he has to get, we have to get that election uh, system fixed. Thank you, Will. I really appreciate it. All of us at ATP, you've done a fantastic job. Thanks for going to Florida for us. Thanks for your report. Some of your stuff is just like the Matt Gates thing is just amazing. 
the editor of the Epic Times, just amazing. The two uh, fellows running for office that you did interviews with, just amazing. We're very proud of you and we're very grateful for you coming on for us. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you out there in ATP land. Remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, please text the word TRUTH to 88202. We'll sign you up for more Will Johnson and me and all our other contributors. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.